Hey guys, hope you all are doing fine and welcome back to Lucas Lab. Today I will show you how you can use MIT App Inventor to build a simple Android app for controlling RGB LEDs over Wi-Fi. This is part 2 of the ESP32 Wi-Fi RGB LED controller mini project. Wow, that's a mouthful, try saying that 5 times fast. But if you haven't watched part 1 yet, I'll link it in the card so you can watch it now and catch up. Here's a quick recap. In the last video, I showed you a demo of the ESP32 web server and the app I built with MIT App Inventor. I also showed you how the code for the app and web server are structured, and I briefly explained how we can use HTTP to handle the communication between our web server and client. By the way, all the files and code for this mini project are now open source and available for download on my GitHub page. Check out the link in the description for more info. For the uninitiated, MIT App Inventor is an open source web tool for creating Android apps, geared mostly towards novice programmers. It has a very beginner-friendly visual block programming language, which is pretty neat. All we need to get started is an Android smartphone and a computer with a web browser. Go to appinventor.mit.edu on your computer and click on Create Apps. Log in with your Google account and you'll be shown your projects page. The really cool thing about App Inventor is that we can test our app as we're building it in real time. Just download the App Inventor 2 companion app on your smartphone. It's available for free on the Google Play Store. After it's installed, we go back to the computer, click on Connect, AI Companion, scan the QR code with our smartphone, and BAM! We're in! Now we just need to create a new project and give it a name. Before we get to programming though, first we need to create our app's user interface, or UI for short. We'll start by using these horizontal arrangements to create some nice gaps and some space to fit some labels for text. I like to use 6% height for vertical spacing. Next, we use some horizontal arrangements again to fit our sliders and some more text underneath. Remember to center everything with the Align Horizontal property and set the sliders width. In my opinion, 50% looks pretty nice. And remember to set the minimum and maximum values for the sliders, which are 0 and 255, since we're representing RGB colors with 8-bit numbers. We use some more horizontal arrangements for some gaps again, and another one for fitting a button. We'll center the button and set the button label to Set Color. Now all that's left to do is add a web component, you can find it under the connectivity menu, and it'll show up as a non-visible component. It won't add anything to the UI, but it's a fundamental part of the app, since this is the component that takes care of all of the HTTP requests for us. And that's it, our UI is ready to roll. Yeah, sure, it looks pretty simple and kind of plain, but hey, it works! You can play around with it on your smartphone and see for yourself. Alright, so now that the UI is done, let's go to the programming side of our app by entering the blocks editor. Here's what we want our app to do. The app needs to read the positions from three sliders that represent the R, G, and B values, using the range from 0 to 255. The app needs to somehow join these numbers with the ESP32's IP address to form a URL like so. And lastly, we need to perform an HTTP GET request to our web server with this URL when we press the SET COLOR button. Alright, that's pretty straightforward. We'll store the ESP32's IP address in the text variable so we can access it later on to form the URL. We'll use number variables to store the current R, G, and B values as integers. But these three numbers need to be converted to strings later, so we'll need some text variables as well. The position changed event will be triggered every time the position of the slider changes, and when it does, all we need to do is reassign the current position of the slider's thumb to R value, G value, and B value. But we can quickly notice that there are a couple of problems that appear when we do this. First of all, the thumb's step, or how much it increments between two distinct positions, is not a whole number. We're using 8-bit numbers to represent the R, G, and B values, so we need to round the slider's position to the nearest integer somehow. For that, we just need to check whether the thumb's position rounded to the nearest whole number is equal to itself or not. If it is, no problem, we already got an integer. If it isn't, though, we just need to move the thumb to the nearest whole number and assign its new position to R value, G value, and B value. The second problem we need to solve is that once we've got the position of the sliders, we can try to convert them directly to strings and join them, but notice how this portion of the URL changes length when the number variables only have one or two digits. And how the heck is the web server going to guess which characters of the URL represent which color? Take these values for R, G, and B as an example. Should we decode them like this? Or like this? Maybe like this? The simplest way to solve this problem is for R string, B string, and G string to have the same length always. And we can do this by adding zeros to the left of their original numbers. All we need to do is check if they're less than 100, in which case we need to add only one zero character to the left, or if they're less than 10, and then we need to add two zero characters to the left. Alright, we're almost done. All that's left is to set up the web connectivity and instruct the app to perform the get request when the set color button is pressed. We can use the click event to check when the set color button is clicked, and we'll create a URL property by joining rstring, gstring, b string and the IP address like so. 
Finally, we'll use the web.get method which uses the URL property to perform an HTTP GET. The server's response will either be stored in the file or a text variable, but we don't really need to do anything with it since the communication between the app and the ESP32 is one directional. And we're done. That's it. That's all we need for an app with functional web connectivity. Pretty cool, right? Now, there's definitely a couple of things we could improve in our app. For one, the UI is definitely functional, but it's still quite bare bones. And it would be really cool if we had a color wheel instead of three sliders for selecting the color. Also, aesthetic-wise, the UI could definitely use an overhaul to make it look more professional. I mean, come on, it's just three sliders and a button. It would be interesting to make the app send the HTTP request on its own. Every time we release the sliders, or maybe every couple of seconds, the app would collect the RGB data and send it to the server autonomously. Also, if I end up making more IoT projects in the future, like a weather station, an RGB LED lamp, or heck, maybe even a Wi-Fi solar charge controller, it would be nice to have a single app to control and access all of these devices, but that's a project for another video. Well, that's all I've got to show you for now, but in the next video, we'll finally take a look at the ESP32 web server and I'll walk you through the Arduino code that's running on it. Stay safe guys, and keep on coding. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, leave your suggestions in the comment section below, and subscribe for more content. That's all I've got for now. See y'all later.